It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy and Renee are here, and we're going to talk about, of course, all the rumors swirling around about the new iPhone, new MacBooks, and maybe even a new Apple Watch. We're less than a month away from the announcement. Let's see what people think is going to happen next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 519, recorded Tuesday, August 9th, 2016. Locked in the bathroom. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Eero. Why settle for just a Wi Fi router? when you can have a brilliant, hyper-fast, super-simple Wi-Fi system. No more buffering, no more dead zones. Finally, Wi-Fi that works. For free overnight shipping, visit Eero, E-E-R-O dot com. And at checkout, select overnight shipping and use the offer code MACBREAK. And by Texture, the mobile app that lets you access the world's most popular magazines anytime, anywhere, using your phone or tablet. For your free trial, visit texture.com slash twit. And by Gazelle, the online marketplace for buying and selling used gadgets. Shop from a variety of certified pre-owned electronics or trade one in for cash. Give new life to a used device at gazelle.com today. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we cover the latest Apple news. And uh, in this, the, the, the vacuum preceding the Apple news, the Apple rumor. Andy Anako is here from the Chicago Sun Times, looking sharp. Hi, Andrew. Hello, Leo. Good this to see so, you. So, so, so this is the last time we could make like comments regarding like the the, the brick house set studio. This is it. I'll okay. explain in a moment. Renee Ritchie also here from imore.com, host of the brand there new Apple Talk podcast, which is Marvy. Oh, thank you so much. Marvy, Marvy, Marvy. I've and, caught almost every my childhood dream, Leo. I've caught almost every Spider-Man villain. Wow, look at that. You're, <laughs> wow, you've got a two thousand. Pokemon? Oh, see, I, the Pokemon are okay, but I just I managed to name them all after Spider-Man villains, and that makes <laughs> me incredibly happy. <laughs> you're just you're just a sad, sad, sad. Person. I know. There's a few things in life to love, Leo. <laughs> it's it's one it's one thing when you wish to do something that makes you like a nerdy social outcast, but when you realize that wait a minute, there are fifty or sixty nerdy social outcasts here in this park. I need to make myself a nerdy outcast out. of the of the nerdy outcast. The nerdiest of the nerds. At least I'm not him. Jeez. <laughs> right and nerdy. Actually, we were in San Diego on Thursday and Friday, and uh, Pokemon fever has hit the, the uh, what do you call San Diego? The city of the... The city that never changes the weather. The city of the never changes weather. <laughs> the city of Diego. Uh, there's a, we were in Coronado, and there's a uh, kind of like a median strip with grass. And I thought, I couldn't, I, we drove by, and I thought, what's going on? And I realized, oh, they're all, they're all going like this. <laughs> and then that night we came back because there's three pokey stops or four. No, there's four pokey stops with lures and a gym in a very small area. Uh, the Golden Square. Yeah. And then we came back after we went to see a play. And after the play, about 10, 1030, we're coming back. And it's like, it's like Woodstock. You can't even drive. They're, they're spilling into the street. They're shoulder to shoulder. It was incredible. I so, was at a park and this very nice old man came up and he goes, if you want to get better at that, just go to Imore. There's this woman, Serenity Caldwell. No. She knows every trick. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And oh my I thanked God. him very much for the advice. It was the nicest thing I'd heard in a oh long time. Oh my God. You didn't say I'm her <laughs> boss. No, <laughs> no, no. no. I mean, it's just a great awesome. moment. Awesome. Isn't that a wonderful Renee, moment? Oh, I don't, yes. I don't, I don't want to, I mean, this, I, I, I'm your friend, so I should say this. You <laughs> didn't realize it was me. I came up oh. just jokingly. <laughs> And then without looking up, you said, yeah, she's great. She's wonderful. Get out of my way. And I'm like, oh, there's a Pikachu around the corner. <laughs> hey, hey, I got, <laughs> I got my mind's on Magneto. No, he was out catching with his daughter. They were doing some family time. So, so uh, we are now in that state, uh, that sad and lonely state. Mm. Uh, two of them, actually. One, this is probably the last time you will see us in this studio looking this purple. <laughs> <laughs> the purple lights are going. If you're watching video, the, uh, this is relatively intact, although the rest of the studio is slowly dis disappearing in front of my eyes. But what's behind me is relatively intact, but only really for a few days more. 
We, we are building a new studio, as you know. In fact, Carson, do you have the picture of them? Uh, uh, I like to check in to make sure they're not playing Pokemon Go. Uh, they, are, they are putting glue on the floor for the carpet tiles. That, it looks small. It is not that small. You can see the lighting rig on, uh, over there. It's actually the same size as our existing studio. Can I say, wouldn't you love to have a job like that where you, your work is in itself your own progress bar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only 48% more. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's great. That's awesome. Uh, so there, uh, there it is, and we will be moving there. And they, you know, there'll be this interregnum between uh, today and sometime in the year 2018, where <laughs> it will be uh, look a little unfinished here and there. Like this gear behind me is the, this. What do you? What did you call that, Andy? The the cog. The cog will be uh, removed, I believe, from the wall sometime between now and the next Mac Break Weekly. We'll do one more Mac Break Weekly here. Uh, and then we will be moving moving to the studio. And there, uh, you know, you'll see the, the operation in the reverse. <laughs> it will start looking pretty ratty. And then I hope, one hopes, get better and better bit by bit. However, that is not the, the vacuum I was referring to. I'm referring to the calm before the storm. Here we are, August 9th. Pretty mm -hmm. certain there will be an Apple event sometime in the next 30 days. Mm -hmm. Pretty certain there will be a new iPhone or two announced. Um, and the rumor mill is going hot and heavy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're seeing we're, we're seeing more people who purportedly have actual hardware, and that's and more people who are willing to actually share photos of what they purport to be actual hardware. And yes, thirty days before what we expect to be an event is the time where we start to start to take that stuff a little bit more seriously, because this is the time where. They're, they, they, they've got enough, they've got things ramped up and they've got so many people briefed in that there is no, un, no godly way that you can keep a lid on, on what's going on. So we They're can kind millions of, of them. we can kind yeah. of uh, uh, trust or relatively, I mean, they, you know, even with the Samsung uh, Note 7, when they announced it last week, there were, a, there were at least two items where the rumor mill got it completely wrong. So it is still possible. Yeah. One well, or I mean, two the rumor items mill can tell you what is going into various stages of the product, can tell you exactly like, which feature might be in which model. But all, the most importantly, it can't tell you the story. So what the Apple has never really been about the chipsets. It's about the feature sets. And so it's got these two lenses. And it sounds like one of those lenses is a black and white one to increase low sensitivity. But what is that really going to deliver with the right. camera? And how are they going to tell us about it? What are the results? How is the, the chip, the processor? We know they're making an Apple A10, but what, what's in the guts of that chip? And how is that going to process and work with those lenses? And that's what Phil Schiller is going to tell us on this stage so if we know the bits like there the rumor today was that it was going to have a 1080p screen on the uh iphone 7 and a 2k screen on the iphone 7 plus which is a big bump in resolution for both devices and a not and an actual standard not a weird apple 3x size or something mm -hmm. but you know what is that what are they going to come out to say sharpest display ever are they going to say well it works with google cardboard now now Probably finally as that. good as the galaxy s7 things like that yeah well, well yeah, I mean, it's, it's a like, case like yeah yeah, and, and Renee's exactly right. I mean, particularly when you consider that uh, the CPU on an iPhone is part of pretty much every feature on that phone. So you can't really talk about the camera unless you talk about the CPU. You can't really talk uh, about the display unless you talk about the CPU. Networking, everything feeds into the CPU. Uh, the, it's, it's always interesting when you think about uh, what sensor is going to be going behind uh, the, the new camera or what the megapixel count is going to be, who's going to be supplying it. But it really comes down to the secret sauce that Apple can create. Uh, but they, they can do things with the two camera setup that uh, probably no other uh, device manufacturer can do just because they've always developed this iPhone camera with the idea that we have a piece of silicon that does nothing but collect data that we can then transform into a picture that is much better than that sensor is supposed to be able to create. There on the right actually, is the uh, is the purported uh, new yeah. uh, case. Yeah. And they've yeah. got an HDR They're, pipeline, Ellie, all this from software through, and they've got DCP, uh, sorry, DCI-P3 displays in several other devices. So an iPhone that could not only shoot in RAW, but shoot in HDR RAW, but also display uh, DCI-P3. And I believe they're... They're actually compatible with 2020, though almost no one has rolled that out yet. Uh, it starts to get really interesting. So, like on the surface, yeah, it's a rounded rectangle, but a lot of the story is going to be about you know what they tell on that stage. Yeah. yeah. If you Even look the, if, at Apple's typical release cycle, going back at least to the iPhone 4, every other year was a really radically new TikTok. design this is not going to be the talk that we you would expect no. right so like th it's hard it gets really hard as you go forward we saw that with intel too intel was on tiktok but going to 14 nanometer and then going to 10 nanometer super hard so they're doing tiktok tiktok 
talk, talk. And Apple too, it's not that they it's not that they're withholding it. It's that I wrote this in an article on uh, this week. It's really effing hard to do the next design that they want, and it's just not ready yet. And, but there's a lot of stuff that is ready, and you can sort of put that into this. And it, and when Apple does do new designs, we, we still call them boring. I mean, the iPhone 5 was called boring. It's pretty hard. I mean, we've was, kind of reached, I think, the perfect but consensus on what form factor it should be. It smartphone. should be somewhere between 5 and 6 inches, you know, probably right in the middle there. It should have a certain resolution. It's going to have mostly glass. Um, and Apple, one big change, which I kind of welcome, is even though they're going to stick with the home button, it's not going to be a moving, we hear. Force press. Yeah, uh, force yeah, touch. It'll have a little haptic in there. Haptic, yeah. I like that. They did the same thing with the iPod, remember? The click wheel moved for a while. Uh, but you you want to if you're going to have a, a a sealed phone you don't want to have little crevices in there and also there's mechanical failure but I mean the big right. thing is that a, a ground wreck boring but then BlackBerry announces a pop tart shaped phone and everyone goes oh look how innovative and and, and does design it is, and then nobody buys yeah, it yeah the password and the, the people who yeah. called it innovative don't give the money back to BlackBerry for making right. they lost on people I, I I think the consensus was oh how sad you got me you gave you gave me, you gave me a pop tart it's you gave me a pop tart shaped phone we wanted a phone that we could actually use that's that was relevant for 2016 instead of you know 20 2008 here's a triangle uh, it's innovative uh, this is so there hard are to just because of the because of the form a, factor because of what you're doing with the phone there are form follows function eventually and maybe we've just reached it's you know, like spreadsheets remember that lawsuit it's like that you like this is the way you make a spreadsheet i'm sorry but that's the yeah. ideal way of doing it yeah also, also I, th I think that most people who want style, they're just going to put it into a case anyway. Uh, I think there is a real desire not just to protect your phone, but also to make it identifiably yours. That's a good point. And we're, and we're, not, and we're, not, we're not talking about to make sure you don't pick up the wrong one after dinner. I'm talking about you want something that really says this is not one of the 14 million phones that was made to, yesterday. This is Andy and Otko's phone. This is the one that has my that has my, my, my sweat stains on it and stuff. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um there is some innovation or, <laughs> I mean, we, the headphone jack, I'm sure Apple is going to spin as innovation. I, I have to give credit to Steve Gibson. Last week, right after the show, he said, you know, there may be one thing they could do with this getting rid of the headphone jack that would, be, would, would make it worthwhile. He had come up with this thought. What if they used the fact that the iPhone now has a big battery so it could power these headphones a little bit better? It has significant computational capabilities, so that could be used. What if these were noise-canceling headphones? People pay a premium for good noise-canceling headphones because uh, they have to have a microphone. They have to have power. They have to have some computational capabilities. You could do all that with an iPhone and with simple earbuds. they've been running earbuds. out, right? That was the latest story where some of the noise-canceling headphones were failing. The battery was starting to fail right. after 18 months. Right. So, yeah. so, maybe, so this may be... I thought that was quite interesting. He also posited that maybe because these are wearables, you know, the thing in your ear really has access to not just, you know, motion like a pedometer, but also heart rate, better probably than something on your wrist. Also things, uh, more obscure things like blood oxygen and perhaps even blood pressure. Um, and you're now connecting not via an analog audio port, but by a data port. So this could be sent. The earpieces could be sending data back to the phone in some interesting ways. Yeah. So I that is a, even if, yeah. if Apple, Apple to me they have to say something like that. They have to give me some value for eliminating something that is frankly works and is useful. Yeah, but my, my that's all true. Uh, and also uh, after the show, someone on Twitter pointed out something I hadn't really considered uh, after. Talking about how much time I spend trying to see how many people in the world are wearing wired headphones versus Bluetooth and saying that I just don't see masses of people wearing Bluetooth headphones out in the wild. They say, well, how, how many people of the wired headphones you saw are wearing the phones that the headphones that came with the phone? So if they if Apple were to if Apple were to delete the headphone jack but include wired headphones with them, that would work with whatever port they're going to be plugged into. That might not be a, a very big deal for a lot of people, if it is true that they buy, they use whatever came in the box and they don't tend to lose them or, 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 or wash them. But my, my, my main beef about it has always been you can make, there are a hundred really good ways to explain why uh, having digital headphones that plug into the lightning port are a good idea. I still haven't heard a single good consumer positive idea that explains why you cannot ha also have a headphone jack, an analog headphone jack next to it. Hmm. Hmm. Well, Edison, all the things. this is going to be, I mean, I think we now are close enough, and I said this last week too, that this probably is going to be what they do. And I'm just curious at this point 
how they justify it. Metallic yeah. blue. Leah, we established a long time ago that they can do it. Like the, there was a, the iPhone 5S was a magnificent phone and all the people we talked to said, oh, it's gold, I'm getting gold. And then 6S was a great iPhone. It's, it's metallic pink. It's a metallic right. pink. I want we gold. We are just that superficial. Yeah. I want pink. Um, it, New improve, color want. You will get improved water resistance. You'll get a little bit more room for yeah. a battery. You'll get, uh, I mean, there are some. Again, IP, better IP camera, better screen. On, I, I, oh, I'm sorry. Well, No, but well, Samsung's doing it without that. I understand what you're right, saying. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. In fact, so, Samsung took a shot at Apple last week yeah. on their event saying, and we come with a headphone jack. It'll be, I cannot wait. I think this is going to be a very interesting conversation after the event. By the way, uh, Renee, your best guess at the date of the event? Uh, whatever the, Wednesday, the first Wednesday in September, is that the 6th or the 7th or okay. something? First Wednesday in September. I'm back, cal I'm back sure. calendared. And then 10 days later, which would be the 16th. Mostly That's, last year they went they had to go an extra week so it'll be it's ten days or seventeen days depending on if it was last year if it was last year was an anomaly or not yeah uh, it just depends on yeah. the supply chain yeah um, anything else uh, redesigned antenna bands processors faster it always is. Um, I love it. I hope they do a uh, higher res phone. I think that that's one thing they've suffered. Although it's given them great battery life, right? The 6s plus is only 1080p, but it goes all day. And it was a technology they wanted because it's it's dual domain pixels in an IPS display, and it, it the LED is used for 3D touch. So there it, it is you always try to make the best compromise you can with the constraints you have. If you go to OLED, they couldn't have done the 3D touch the way it was implemented. Uh, and if you go to too high a screen, sometimes you have to start messing with how the sub pixels work. So they they got the display technology they wanted, and it was sharp enough for what they wanted. But if they start wanting more, then they're going to have to you know the technology matures and they can do more things at a better scale. The rumors yeah. they're going OLED I'm, next year. You don't. Could be. They just have to re-engineer 3D Touch. Oh, okay. You know, is tell me how 3D Touch is better than just long press. It's, well, it, it'll, go ahead, my, uh, my, my quick one is that it really allows you to put a lot more function without having to put a lot more clutter on the screen. Uh, and that not only adds to simplicity, but it also lets you redefine common uh, parts of the user interface, like just the lock screen. The lock screen can really be that thing that you never have to drill down Because you have the pop-up menus. Exactly. And also, it's this it's one of those perfect little interface enhancements where mm -hmm. if you know it's there, it can make things so much faster once you learn how to use it. If you don't know it's there, it will never confuse you. It will never distract you. You can still tap to launch whatever you want and then you know, double tap or long press to do whatever you want. want. Doesn't interfere with anything else. Uh, so it's, it really is the sort of thing where uh, if it's if you teach people how to use it on the lock screen of the iPhone, then that becomes part of their vocabulary. And then you could do things like, well, guess what? Now we, we do have this little uh, phone oh, screen. You could do that with what? long press too, right? Well, but it's you need to, you need to expand the vocabulary a little bit. The haptics is, is nice, I guess, but really, a long press could pop up a context menu. Yeah, it's right so click. You, it, 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 but a, long, a, a deep a deep press is immediate. A long press is there's a pause, right. and you don't know how long you've held. I tell you, you why I say that. A because you want OLED, so maybe it would be you could go back to a long press. But B because I have a lot of trouble. You know when I when I get conflicted is when I want to do the jiggle, jiggle, jiggle to delete an app. You got to go back to long press. It's hard, yeah, to yep. know, well, how, to, uh, I often for I often 3D touch it instead. It's like, yeah. So the advantage of 3D touch is if you expand, like remember that old thing when they designed the Mac and the principle was that if you throw into the corner, that's the easiest motion, that's the end of that range. With 3D touch, um, with a, a multi-touch display, pressing harder is just the natural extension natural. of that range. Yeah. So long press, you've got to time it. Like you said, you've got to hold right. it, but not too long. Think about with 3D it. touch, it's, it's the same sort of thing, but you're using force instead of time as a regulator for the controls. So it lets you, exactly what Andy said, stack interface elements that are less used, but you don't want buried, like, I guess they are literally buried. Right. But you don't want to make them part like sub menu B, part nine, eight screens down. You want them to be accessible, just not in your face. And then, for example, clear all notifications. We've been asking for that forever. And now, just like on the Apple Watch, you 3D touch instead of regular touch on the on the on the delete button. It says, "Do you want to clear all notifications?" Well, yes, yes, I do. And it becomes discoverable because once in a while you're excited and you'll press harder, and something will pop up, and you'll you'll discover it, and then you'll try pressing something hard again. It'll pop up again, and it gives you a chance to discover all this stuff without them having to have like a, a Legend of Zelda sort of explainer for every step of the way on the interface. Yeah. All right. All right. You've convinced me. Um, and, and by the way, when I do long touch, I often press hard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's why I I'm mean, confused, right? It's, don't you don't you like don't you feel like if you press the elevator button to, uh, to a little harder or you tap it more times, it'll work better? We know it's not true, but we still 
We know it's disconnected. We know yeah. the letter's completely disconnected. Yeah, yeah. It has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> the elevator will get here when it does. Uh, mm -hmm. Any other, uh, I guess one thing, there was a rumor for a while that it might be a, a kind of an iPhone Pro that it would be all glass. That now we think is yeah. not the case, right? Next year. Next year. There, there's, a, yeah, there's, there's a lot, actually, a lot of what we're thinking, what we're kind of uh, extrapolating about is just the idea that there's a nice round number for an, for an anniversary coming out next year. Mm -hmm. That That's going to be the 10th anniversary of the iPhone. And for some... For, for some human weakness analog brain reason, we tend to think that this is the one that, this is the one that's going to be there's going to be it's going to be fused light. It's going to be a <laughs> quantum packet of light. There's going to be no tangibility to it whatsoever. It's just kind of it's like, OK, but what if, if they, they're going to like they're going to do something way better than just there's going to be a new case color involved with it. So anytime that it seems like it's justification for people like us that we're thinking, I don't think that they're going to have that, that sort of 3D camera. I think they're, they're saving that for next year, the big 10th anniversary model, when for all we know, Apple's like, well, uh, yeah, I guess we'll do a poster or something. But no, we're just going to do whatever. Yeah, the iPhone, <laughs> have the 10th a cake. anniversary, the iPhone. 7s or 10th anniversary iphone x i mean like there's certain things that sound impressive. it's a mixed anniversary i have to point out because they announced the iphone in the january of 2007 yeah mm -hmm. so J january of, of 2017 is really the 10th anniversary not september it right. came out in june not september so i think you could just as reasonably argue that this phone is going to be the 10th anniversary iphone it's the one we'll be using in january 2000 it's also the 10th model like they've done this will be i think all the right 10th model okay you're right that's a good point how about, how about we just make it the 10th anniversary of the phone that we thought that apple's going to be making back in august of 2016 <laughs> the one that has the keypad and the yeah. one will have the pull out antenna and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the stylus it's hard to remember what it was like before it came out i mean we were doing this show I remember Scott Bourne was so excited about the iPhone. Uh, we even debated whether there was going to be an iPhone. Apple was that good at secrecy in those days. And uh, and whether it would be named the iPhone. Scott was sure that it would be named the iPhone. Remember those days, Andy? You were you were with yep. us then. Uh, it's yep. funny that we don't live in that was we were living in a different time. Well, again, it was it was still a Steve Jobs era. Yeah, and I, st I still remember that. Uh, gosh, I, I, I will I will always I, I, one of those memories that I just immediately broke the plastic tab off the corner of it. Yeah. And inside joke for people who are above the age of thirty two, uh, <laughs> was just being being there at the at the Steve Jobs presentation of the iPhone because Andy, what's an a cassette? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's the things you're not allowed to touch. Yeah. They're only daddies. My like daddy knows how to, daddy how to work. Oh, it's Tony Fidel's iPhone. Uh, too soon. Oh man. But yeah, I mean that's just the, just the uh, in every in every Apple event, there's a certain amount of excitement that is not fake, but it's probably contributed to by the presence of Apple people who are who are there. This is the this is the first one where unequivocally it's like everybody who is trying to be jaded, even the people that that I saw who are consistently and kind of reliably anti-apple we're like yes yes it's a phone and it's an internet device and and it was weird too though because it used to be macworld and ces were back to back and you had people flying trying to fly in between both yeah. and you never knew which was going to have the bigger announcements and then i think right away to ces was absolutely eclipsed there's just yeah. nothing yeah. nothing else announced that year mattered yeah isn't that funny yeah that's all we could talk about we get to vegas yeah. and all you could talk about is apple Ah, those were the days. I wasn't even there. <laughs> three months, I, didn't, I didn't have to pay for a single drink or a single dinner because I was, I was like, I was like that elder at the village. Like said, tell us, Andy. They, tell us. They, they tell me that you are the one who held you a working iPhone. It. You touched. Well, yes, it was a, it was an overcast day. <laughs> it was, had been a long me night. I was tired. And here's a rumor that I found fascinating. It really came out of left field. A new Apple Watch this year. Possible. Uh, KGI Ming Chi Kuo. Yeah, Ming Chi Kuo. Now, Ming Chi Kuo has a uh, checkered history. He, he's an he's analyst. Better than most other financial analysts. He talks a lot about Apple, and he talks from the supply chain side, mm -hmm. which means he usually has some kind of deeper knowledge. They, uh, uh, according to Ming Chi Kuo, uh, there will be a Apple Watch two later this year, or at least announced later this year, with GPS barometer, larger battery, but same thickness. Is an amazing physics higher trip. capacity i think not maybe denser not yeah. larger mm -hmm. yeah or maybe the electronics take up less room and if and if they has gps would have to have a larger capacity battery unless oh, they yeah. miraculously yeah, change the same battery life larger capacity they do make watches with gps that are big ish but not massive the garmin 
It's like Captain yeah. America shield on your wrist. Yeah, okay, that's pretty big. <laughs> that, uh, doesn't Sam, Sam, there's one Samsung watch that's not much bigger than an iPhone that has GPS built into it. Yeah. I see that's it's 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 always an interesting discussion because if you're going to have GPS, I think that either that means that you're going to be producing a really fitness focused device for people who that they, they there's they are going to want to leave their phones behind yeah uh, and that means that of course they're going to be they're going to be out exercising or it means that the other reason for leaving your phone behind is that a lot of the reasons why you feel like you need to have your phone in your pocket that capability is on the watch and for that for me that means having some sort of uh, uh, of an internet radio on it uh, i don't think that it would be a gsm but imagine if you just had uh, something that could do at least edge so just little bursts of text you're not streaming music you're not streaming video you're just allowing an app or a server someplace to to follow through a message or even just send a, a basic sms text message uh so it's it's interesting to figure out what do you, what reason would you what what kind of device would you build if you decided you had to have gps on it and like i said there's a really good case for fitness watch there's not a great case for a regular watch that has gps but it can't do anything uh, to communicate with the outside world unless it's connected to a phone still. Yeah, I mean, my understanding is that there's a lot that fitness is such a huge market for them. And right now, a lot of their their information says that people are going so far as to jog with an Apple Watch and a Garmin, for example, because all they want is that GPS. They just need that accuracy. And if they can serve that market, uh, Edge is a really good idea, but I think they'd have to go back and actually build their own chipsets by now to do it. Yeah. Uh, and Apple is working on motors <clears throat> for a long time, but LTE, I think, is still too hot and too much of a drain. That's maybe a next year. Um, a next year thing. So for now, it's sort of just let's let's make the joggers really, really happy and then we'll go incrementally from there. Also, to be fair, we're still talking about watches that cost about 100 to five to six hundred dollars more than the other popular competitors. Right. So there it's a it's probably a good thing for them to add more palpable value than simply, oh, look at the styling and look at look at how, how nicely the and watch band switch in and out. And it's race to sleep. So with the GPS, it's not like you're playing Pokemon Go and you're looking at the screen and using GPS continuously. It's, you're jogging, it's taking a quick reading and then powering down. So it probably wouldn't be as big a hit. But it's the point you made all along, Andy, which is that Watch One was all about figuring out what the hell is this? How are people yeah. going to use it? What are the features people want and don't want? And Apple uh, presumably has a significant amount of data now and can make Watch Two uh, be the evolution. And clearly they've said... Or they've Friends seen. Friends no. Fitness, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just just look at how different the the Watch OS two is to Watch OS one. Things that were just fundamental. They again, they, this button that's just for nothing but your your twelve friends. Okay, no, we're going to make this for something else. And glimpses that are always okay. No, we're going to allow you to simply have a carousel of apps that go from left to right. Um, I'm I'm I really will I'm I'm going to love seeing whatever major update they make to the hardware because that's going to be the direct answer to the question: What did Apple learn after? observing people using their watch for a year and a half to two years. Yeah. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure that they would that they're going to the only thing that makes me a little bit skeptical of the idea of a watch to, uh, new hardware this year is that I think that the next thing they do with the watch is going to be not just we are adding a barometer or just we're adding a, a GPS to what we've got now. I think that they're going to say if we have to do new tooling to uh, get to get this, these new batteries, these new components inside this thing, we're going to rethink things like the digital crown. We're going to rethink things like do we want to place this uh, the, this button on a corner so it's easier to press without having to sort of torque the watch on the band, things like that. I, I think that when they do new hardware, it's just not going to be we're putting new stuff inside the old case. I think they're going to rethink and uh, enhance what they made, what they built uh, two years ago. Uh, so you guys credit this rumor that it, it does seem possible. It's not insane. It's they're, 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 they're not, he's not proposing things that have uh, that are would be really hard for Apple to do. So he does say, do not expect LTE support. Yeah, until no, next year. Like, it Renee won't... Said, like Renee said, it's hard. Too yeah, hard. it's yeah. hard. It's and battery draining, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I think he talked about this then uh, as well, and they maybe put it in another post or something. But there's also rumors of a retooled iPhone, sorry, Apple Watch One, which if Apple follows their existing oh, strategy, the smart. new one would come out, and then the old one would be held on cheap. at the lower price yeah. level. Yeah. yeah, make it cheap. So, so, that, so that resurfaces the old question we were debating a couple years ago that. If you spent a thousand dollars on a stainless steel watch, or God forbid, twelve grand on a gold one, mm. are they going to let you swap out the? If if, mm. if they do, if they do it in such a way that you could, do, it, it seems as though the dimensions and the the hardware buttons are the same. Would they do some sort of a trade in rebate? Would they allow you to do some sort of a? Give us your watch. We'll send it back a week later with new guts, the new hardware it needs, and the new software, or for a thousand dollars. 
do you get the nostalgia of saying, no, no, you see, what you don't understand is classical hand-tooled software of, <laughs> two, of 2015. They don't, they don't make software I, like this anymore. I could actually see the people with a stainless steel watch worrying about that more than some people with a gold watch. Like it, it was one person who bought three of them for his dog yeah. because buying four of them would be gauche. And it's probably, they probably already dropped them, you know, into some corner somewhere and haven't looked at them again. And they'll just, but did I have one of these before? I don't know. Buy me three. Um, and that sounds a little bit like, that sounds like, I don't know, flippant, but uh, Apple's market for this was the people who pay $25,000 for a plane ticket from London to Dubai, buy a $20,000 dress and wear it once. Uh, you know, th that was, you just would just not buy an app. They want an Apple watch, but they only buy gold watches. So this solves that problem for them. And it's a, a totally different sort of market than anything else that, that goes on. But people who spend 1200 to 1500 for a stainless steel watch, I could see them going, well, wait a minute, you know, $1,000 <laughs> on my wrist. Now this one looks way better. It's another $1,000. Uh, I don't know what to do. Well, I'm, I, for one, am ready to spend a lot of money on a new Apple product. I just don't know what it'll be. Maybe <laughs> it'll be, be, you read the uh, kind of scathing uh, article from The Verge about Apple. Uh, so not, angry. Yeah, so angry. Verge used to be thought of as kind of an Apple fan site. <laughs> Maybe they've overcome that. This was an opinion piece. Well, if it was uh, Neelay, then oh, no, Sam it Byford. Wasn't, it wasn't. Okay. Sam Byford. Is, uh, Apple should stop selling four-year-old computers. This is what we've been talking about, of course, for some time, that some of these computers, not all, are super annuated. The OG MacBook Pro with the spinning optical disc. Yeah. On the other hand, I've seen rebuttals that say, well, you know, it's not like Intel has made massive improvements in its processors. Um, what is it about, the, uh, for instance, the Mac Pro, that you would want upgraded. I mean, uh, you're not going to... It's a concession. It's like, it's the same reason they kept the iPad 2 on the market for so long is that there are people who want to either buy, you know, a truckload of them or there are people who just, they, they want a MacBook, but they want an optical drive. And Apple said that's not the future. Um, none of our products going to have that going forward. But we have the last model we made and we'll keep this on the market for as long as we possibly can. And if you really, really, really want that optical disc, you can find it buried somewhere on the store and, you know, enjoy but for everyone else, here is our shiny new <laughs> MacBook Pro with the OLED. And, and instead of meeting you at the door at the Apple store, we will make you walk all the way back to pick it up and then walk all the way forward while people line and say, shame, 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 shame. And we will live stream it. The, yeah, the, that to me is more understandable. Like the Mac Pro is hard to understand because you know, even if Intel wasn't quick with the Xeon chips, there's graphics cards that could be updated on that. So that to me is just hard to understand why they made such a big deal about it. You know, the very famous Phil Schiller, not even anymore my ass, and then just let it lie fallow for three years. Yeah. But the Mac, letting people have that, a Mac Pro. That comment is now biting him fun. in the same place, I have to say. <laughs> Um, this is Joel Ruska's response in Extreme Tech. And I think Joel actually makes a good point. Apple's stagnant product lines, he doesn't deny it, mostly reflect the state of the computer industry. Uh, you know, Apple, yeah, it'd be great if Apple could update it, but there's not a, a lot of compelling new hardware to put in there. I think well, and that's the point with the Mac Pro delay. Well, I mean, if you want to call it a delay, is that Apple had the choice of putting just the latest generation ship chips in there and shipping them as is. And, you know, it's almost like a cliche now. I, Apple's designs have been imitated by almost everybody, sometimes creatively, sometimes exactly. Every Ultrabook pretty much looks like a MacBook Air. Most of the higher books look like a MacBook Pro. Uh, there's just nothing exciting there. And Apple does not like doing unexciting things. So they decided to maybe take a gamble and try something a little bit a little bit different. You know, maybe that's the OLED strip, maybe it's Touch ID, but that proved to be harder to bring to market than maybe their original timeline suggested. So instead of a Skylake bump, we're now, you know, three months past WWDC and hoping that it arrives in September. But otherwise it would have been just that, an incremental update that would have helped a small percentage of people who really would have found a difference in either the battery savings or the clock speed. Uh, and now you have a chance and maybe it'll succeed, maybe it won't, but now you have a chance, you know, to, to put something new on the market. And I think that's what Apple strives to do. Had they, of course, done that, uh, you know, just shipped out a new shiny with slight upgrade, uh, I might have, and others might have said, oh, they're just trying to get you to buy new stuff without much of an improvement. Boring. It's just, a, yeah, it's all about money. It's all about, and it, there is, I mean, I think people who complain, including myself, we just want a new computer every few years. It's not that you need one. Apple wants to sell them. I mean, it's upset that we are that there aren't new MacBook Pros there. Can you, everyone in Apple retail, everyone in they, Apple They would love it, wouldn't up, they? They, yeah. they are like, and they have to, they have to smile and grit their teeth. There is nothing else they can do. They know exactly when that computer is, is 
you know, meant to be on market, what's happening with it, what everyone is saying about it, and they know like this is when we can bring it to market. And they're just smiling and, and they're missing, you know, they're missing education sales right now. I'm sure they're not happy about that one bit. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the other side of the coin is that a lot of people, um, they don't have the luxury of waiting a year. Sometimes like their MacBook is just dead. Again, they, they dropped it off a cliff. It's dead. Or they need to buy 18 new Mac minis or, or, or iMacs because that's what they, they have to build out a new office. And if they look, if they're saying, geez, if we even if they had the, they would love to have the benefit of two years of incremental updates because they would have something that's even even a little bit more modern as opposed to we're going to buy it. And then four months from now, that's when Apple feels as though they've come down from the mountain and contained the stone tablets of we now have the new CPU and we now have this new interface thing and we now have this new multi touch screen thing that we were saving for when we thought the time was right, even though we had this pretty much ready to go uh, a year ago or two years ago, only just to in, in part in pieces and parcels and it's like okay great but i just spent uh, 12 grand on computers that are still about two or three years old and if you just simply stopped focusing on making the best uh, waiting until you could make this the best version it could possibly be and instead gave a little bit more time thinking about what about the person who's buying a new macbook right now can we make the best thing for that person right now that's that person's going to feel a little minus yeah uh, let's take a break. Talk more. Andy Anako, Chicago Sun Times. Renee Ritchie, the iMore family of products. <laughs> the iMore conglomerate, the Kiretsu. The, 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 the Halliburton oh, of tech journalism. The Halliburton of tech journalism. They just keep on going. You know what doesn't keep on going? Oftentimes, your Wi Fi. How many times have... Why are they showing Renee? Why are you showing Renee? <laughs> look, look at this man. I'm a Wi-Fi dead zone leader. Watch this man. Does he look happy about his Wi-Fi? No. He's suffering. He's suffering because he's... <laughs> he's not using Eero. I have to say, Eero won me over. Uh, Eero got a lot of attention when uh, they first uh, came out. The idea being you can do a better job with a Wi-Fi router... But I had to be convinced, uh, and I was. Uh, and let me put it this way. I don't have any choice because Lisa won't let me take the Eero out now. <laughs> she says <laughs> she's been complaining for so long about our Wi-Fi, dropping packets, buffering, just not working. And uh, I said, well, let's try this Eero thing. And uh, now, you know, that's it. She's done. She's found it. I keep saying, is the Wi-Fi okay? She says, what do you mean? Of course, it's great. It's Eero. E-E-R-O. Look, we know that the single, you know, router model isn't working in a lot of homes because of several things. Congestion. A lot of people have uh, many, many uh, Wi-Fi access spots in their vicinity. But it's also uh, because uh, our houses are a little bit more spread out. we got metal in the walls and there's an upstairs, a downstairs. Eero is the first home Wi-Fi system that blankets your entire house in fast, reliable Wi-Fi. No more buffering, no more dead zones. Wi-Fi that works. It's essentially an enterprise Wi-Fi system, but it's easy to use. And this is really what they've done that's so brilliant. You set it up using your iPhone, or you can use an Android phone if you want. It walks you through the process. The Eero lets you manage your network from the phone, including port forwarding, port reservations, all the things that you'd want to do. It's, of course, state-of-the-art. WPA2 encryption, really good customer support, and I've called them just to test it out, and it's fabulous. And it looks good. It's not one of those things with big, it's not like a spider. It looks like just a little lozenge. Now, you can buy one at a time, but I bought the three-pack. And now what's nice is I can add additional. As you grow, you can add additional. There is a 30-day money-back guarantee. It could not be easier to set up. A friend of mine just bought a Nero on my recommendation, because I've been talking about it for some time, as you probably know. Uh, but he hasn't set it up yet. And uh, he says, it's going to be easy. I said, yes, it's going to be easy. It's very easy. EERO.com. If you uh, use the offer code MACBREAK, you'll get free overnight shipping. So you need not suffer a moment longer. Have it tomorrow if you order today. EERO.com. Use the offer code MACBREAK. And by tomorrow evening, your wife... We'll say, what'd you do to the Wi-Fi, honey? This is amazing. <laughs> it's really fast. It's really easy. It really works. 
E E R O dot com. Eero. Don't forget the Mac break offer code for free overnight shipping. Get get better Wi Fi pronto. Stat. Yeah, you can't pry that arrow out of my cold dead fingers. It's actually this it's done some things that I cannot figure out how to do or couldn't figure out how to do on my Asus. Uh port reservations is great. So you say this because I want a server on it, right? And then it was and then I had a weird Comcast configuration. I didn't know how weird it was until you know the Eero fixed it and it was like, oh wow, this is great. So it's 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 pretty sophisticated. I replaced airport extremes with Eero. Somebody's asking in the chat room. Much, much yeah, better. Yeah, talk about unupdated products. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and honestly, and, if, if, it seems like it seems like one of the cheapest things you can do to change and improve your entire life inside the house is to look at go through your house, <laughs> go through your entire network, any any box that has a power supply that is more than five years old. Just don't even it. think about it. Yeah. Buy a new one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just I, I just replaced my my cable modem, and suddenly all this all these all the software and services that I could not get to work are suddenly plug and play again, uh, and it's like my God, it's like it's like I did not realize how dirty my glasses were until someone handed me a lens wipe, and suddenly <laughs> oh, that's what I've been missing. It really is kind of like oh, the future is here. Yeah, they came so, and replaced my modem too, and it's not a faster modem, but it's got higher level of aggregation. So yeah. it just it, it's hard to explain the difference. It's still fast, but it just works so much better. Mine's even faster, yeah. actually. It really made a big difference in speed, mostly like on those areas where in the past the speed was going down because we the yeah. Wi-Fi wasn't strong, the signal wasn't strong. It's five bars everywhere. In fact, <laughs> it's a little bit of a problem because I'm playing Pokemon Go in the house on Wi-Fi, and I'm walking up the street, and the handoff doesn't occur till like I'm. I'm down, I'm down to like a block away. So it's like, you know, I, I want to go to LTE now. Um, yeah. And it looks like something Apple would have designed, actually. It's quite beautiful. Uh, yeah. I, it, I really hope that if, if Apple do, if Apple surprises us with something that no one has rumored, I hope that that device would be a new networking device. Because yeah. you, talk, you talk about making life better for people in a material and tangible way. You just solve networking problems in someone's house and... Boom! You yep. just you just I don't I will I will I will I will give you fifteen thousand dollars for the next watch. I'm so grateful for the fact that Wi-Fi works everywhere. It's super fast uh, and it's super secure. And every time I plug something new in, it just works. Well, it's plumbing now, isn't it? You just expect yeah. you need it. You expect and it. It was stage all your product updates, keep them cached locally, keep yeah. you know your iCloud cached locally. And there's so many interesting things they could do with. They finally put out that updated. How many people? How many people come home? Come home from like a week in a really, really good hotel, and the first thing they do is arrange to have a new shower head installed. <laughs> because they realize that I, I love that no rain idea. shower. I love I that. I have no idea that since 1978 <laughs> they've done such wonderful things with shower heads. <laughs> shower heads. Is there anything the, they can't do? I thought the shower do. massage was a great innovation when I was eight years old. <laughs> Maj, come see the shower head. Ah, don't it's even funny. bother taking off your clothes. It's so don't funny that you say that because actually I have done that. That's so funny that yep. you say that. <laughs> Toilet seat is heated. What are there any? Do you think there'll be uh, any unexpected announcements from Apple? Oh, by the way, normally in the past we've had a September uh, iPhone and a October iPad announcement. I'm I'm figuring that that's not going to happen anymore. They right? didn't last year. They didn't because last it was year. Just so much. Like right. it was just. It's a lot of work for them to coordinate those things, right. even when they do it at town hall. Um, and if they if they don't need to, if there's not some big product that they have to show off, and this year it's hard because do do you traditionally they would have done traditionally for the last few years they would have done iPhone and you know iPod Touch when that was still a thing uh, right away in September and then Mac and iPad in October. Uh, last year they did Apple TV and iPhone and iPad Pro and the new Apple Watch bands all in September, and then the iMac update with the high color resolution was just a press release. So it, it depends on how they want to do that. If they could stage another massive event, you know, maybe do it at um, the, the Civic Center again and have iPhone. And if they bump the iPads to A10 processors too, and the iPads, and maybe the Apple Watch and the the, the MacBook Pros with all those, well, I mean, it's, it's a big event. I think they would. I don't think if this, you know, and Ben Lemjoy has once again published the rumor in Nine to Five Mac that the new MacBooks will feature. Uh, fingerprint reader, a touch ID power button, and these this OLED uh, touch yeah. panel at the top instead of function keys. Uh, if they yeah, that's a significant enough thing that you don't just want to. I just unplugged something. What what did I just unplug there? Is it working again? I kicked something. Um, yeah, you don't want that in a press release. <laughs> you don't. You don't. Yeah, you don't want that in a press release. You want to. You you want to say something about it. You want Phil Schiller wants to say innovation. My you know what, my yeah, keister. It's, it's, 
It's also it's also storytelling, like we were talking right. about at the top of the show. If if they do if and when Apple deletes the the headphone jack, there's going to be a story behind it of how they arrived at this decision and the possibilities that are possible now that they've done this. And if they do something as wonderful as cool as it, it's, that's, the idea of having an OLED function key strip, that is such an instinctively cool idea. Uh, that yeah, you know, they're they're going to want to show that off, and they're going to want to say that no, it's, we're not. It's not just the be able, being able to change the color of these keys and to put a Internet Explorer icon up there when <laughs> Internet Explorer closes. Uh, it's here is how it's going to change and improve uh, your day to day life with this thing. I'm I'm sorry. I'm on, ow. Oh God, that hurt. I'm under the Ooh. table. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> try, try. Post down. Post down. Ow. I just hit. It. I just hit you, Renee. No, I got it. It's, it's all be okay. Be okay. Be trooper. <laughs> Um, it's, it reminds me. Remember the Art Lebedev uh, OLED keyboard with the changing keycaps? Yes. Yeah. This that it, what? How many years ago was that? A decade ago. We're finally actually making something like that, right? Yeah, and mainstreaming. Yeah, it, it makes but perfect sense. Yeah. I think there've been. I think there have been gaming uh, keyboards, and I know I've seen OLED strips on. Um, what are those things that uh, uh, DJs and musicians uh, use where they tap them? The uh, IMP, MPV. Right, and, right. Um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't the know. motion con yeah. the the controllers. So it's not it's not even really tough technology, but it would be really cool to have it. Um, yeah, it's because it's, it goes beyond just simply having 12 keycaps that do things when you press them. It goes it goes it goes into things like having uh, doing Photoshop and being able to keep your color palette right there. Mm -hmm. Like when you need this mm -hmm. color, you tap on it, or when you're making an adjustment, suddenly this becomes a thousand step slider that runs runs the uh, 12 inches wide as opposed to carefully trying to scroll up oh, too much no no a little bit too bit so that's if if not only it exists but also apple allows developers full access to it and to make it do whatever they want it to do that would be pretty astounding that would be that would make that would make me wish that i spilled Diet dr pepper on my laptop this year and so i long. know well here's the other thing i'm really uh, could be very excited about and this is again from same article in 9 to 5 mac uh, this is based on um, pictures of the chassis four USB-C ports no magsafe adapter anymore USB-C would be used for power with embedded support for the new Thunderbolt 3 standard that would make me really interested in this yeah i'd have to buy one then yeah it'd be not for for it i i still stand by the idea that a macbook pro should require as few dongles as possible but that could be such a butt kicker for the uh for the macbook nothing uh or the macbook air the idea of having because you can transport everything over, across USB-C. it's a wonderful cable standard it would bring apple back into the fold of uh we are using the exact same sort of connectors that everybody else is using so you don't you're not going to force you to, to carry another connector with you it would kill 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 the magsafe 2 connector which is something i would love to do yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. it could, yeah. for, because it just keeps popping out for Absolutely no reason, uh, and so I. I you put it on I your lap, Andy. That's why it's popped. Uh, it's great. It's great so long as you keep the MacBook on your desk, and you also yeah. have gaffer tape taping the the cord down. <laughs> and Onto the MacBook. No, I think that's great too. I mean, I'm I'm a little bit sad that DisplayPort whatever 1.4 didn't make it into Thunderbolt 3 standard, which is the big beefy one that we're all hoping for. It's not even making it into Canon Lake, which is the the next TikTok after the current. Um, after Skylake already. So a little bit sad about the display future, but I think that's a phenomenal port. It'll work with all the accessories they've already made for the MacBook. And it's just, I'm super looking forward to say, I want to buy it now. Can I buy it now, Apple? Sorry, I'm losing it here. I just want that MacBook. <laughs> well, according to uh, rumors and 9 to 5 Mac, we'll, we'll be getting one uh, this yeah. year. And I, if they're going to do it, they're going to do it at the same time they announce the iPhones. They have to, right? Unless you're going to do an October or November event. Oh, my understanding is it was very similar to Apple TV last year is that originally targeted at WWDC, couldn't make it in by then. Right. So it's retargeted in September because that's the next right. big event. So this may be a super event to uh, coming up in... Maybe, Fire everything! Yeah, in less than a month. What do you think that the the idea of having a huge uh, keynote ready facility on campus twenty four seven yeah. is going to do to Apple's yeah, release schedule? Things, so they, right? are they are, are they going to now think that like if they had something that was that they were targeting for WWDC that uh, if they decide they need an extra five weeks they will do the <laughs> event on the second week of of August or are they still going to say okay well we don't feel like we want to put have an event 
anytime we want to throw an event, we still think we want to keep to a predictable window so that people know that people can at least we can't talk about what we're going to be doing, but people can at least anticipate that we might have something interesting to talk about uh, or interesting hardware they might want to budget for uh, in September of any given year. I think, yeah, that would be super handy. I think the events team is still like all Apple teams are small and they work incredibly hard. And I don't know how easy it is for them to do multiple events. But if they have the the home base advantage, maybe that is something that they can. It, maybe they can't do that many more. Maybe they could do one or two more a year to sort of fit their schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Or just, you know, invite people in, have a coffee, say, hey, by the way, as long as you're here. Got some the new September MacBooks. event is all of September. Come anytime you want. Yeah. Buttons are there. I, just I, I bet you they're craving this new campus. We're crazy like that. Yeah. They I, no, sorry. I could see them doing stuff like that. You, you yourself know that you're, you're sitting in the in the results of what happens when you no longer have to simply right. work yeah. in a place that you've adapted to right. suit you've adapted yourself. It's like what purpose happens build when is you awesome. Say that? Yeah, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a bathroom right outside the studio, right. Right. <laughs> so that we we can we can do things during commercial breaks instead of just right. doing this for 20 minutes because mm -hmm. it's a 30 second ad read. Yeah. My Iron Man suit is right outside the door. I walk in, it puts it on, I fly out. Yep. Just, just Actually, I'm a little <laughs> nervous because in the new studio is like like many a radio station I've worked in. The bathroom is on the other side of a self locking door. Uh. <laughs> it's near. I can I can run out. But the door will lock behind me, and I can. Here? I'm just dreading Fire. the day that I'm going. Let me in, please. Okay, so, so, yes, yes, the record's yes, running yes. out. The answer to that is you have oh, like a panel behind glass with a hammer on a chain next to it. Behind that is an Ethernet port, a camera, and a microphone. <laughs> I'm out here in the hall, <laughs> finishing MacBreak Weekly. <laughs> yeah, look, and, what are we going to do about that, John? And, and special mobile studio C. We're in the <laughs> mobile mobile. I'll bring my Mevo band. with me at all times. Live from the head. <laughs> uh, what are our plans for that, John? What do you think? We can't hang a key out there because that's the that's a public entrance. People could walk in. Escort. We're gonna escort me and have a have a <laughs> door minder. It's it's so, that or a, or a bedpan at the. At the I think I just clip I just clip the 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 key fob to my shirt like a like a four year old. <laughs> like and just I've 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 have keys sewn into my clothing. Can't you have an NFC lock that I your phone can just? It is it. NFC. Oh, okay. but it doesn't work. Does it work with a phone? Now that would be a good one. No, it's a, it's the it's a fob system though. Uh. Um, that, why does it work with a phone? We should have gotten something. The hey, can we call the motorman's helper? <laughs> They'll never let me do this. Keep that under the desk. <laughs> That's why when you say purpose built, it, it's a dream. True, Andy. But there are limits. I think Lisa just said no. Okay. No, no phone for you. <laughs> no phone for you. Planet of the apps. We now know the the. <laughs> I don't even you wanna, damn can't, dirty ass! Damn you. Can't uh, innovate my ass. I, I really, yeah. Uh, o Malik was marvelous on Twit on Sunday. He said, Apple needs to focus on doing the job better, not on pathetic reality shows. <laughs> However, uh, you know, I have other problems with Planet of the Apps. I think it's going to unfortunately create a whole generation of kids who think, you know, just like I could, you know, like Survivor, oh, it's easy. You just make an app and you get Will I Am, one of the judges, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Gary Vaynerchuk. These, these are the judges. <laughs> Isn't Will I Am still making his own BlackBerry in the Rim Labs? I'm confused. Oh yeah, what happened? Ship. Yeah, I don't know. Still, make, still making his own car based on the GMC, <laughs> the, 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 the DeLorean. Yeah, it's. Um, I don't. Uh, I th I, I'm confident that this, these new apps are going to be every bit as successful as the box office results of every Project Runway movie. Yeah. I think that every band that was on MTV's Making the Band is going to be yeah. as successful. Project as Greenlight. Right. Project right. Runway. Or Project I, Greenlight. Really sorry, Project Runway uh, did A couple of designers have come out of Project yeah. Runway that have been quite successful, though, right? And the thing with this is that like, this is a different team. So it's not it's not like they took people off the MacBook project to put them on this. So like the, the, it is a different team. But, but I understand. The, it still distracts, the, right? No. So the goal for this is once you go all in with Apple, it's, it's the same thing with Netflix and them doing original programming and why Amazon is doing original programming is once you have a subscription service, it's a very different model than just a purchase service. You have to provide content that people are going to not just want to buy but want to subscribe to it's your exclusive. service. exclusive, yeah. Yeah, and then not 
unsubscribe. So it's like Game of Thrones. Are we going to just let go of HBO yeah, after it's right. ended? Or are we going to stay on because, oh, this other cool thing? And you want to drive subscriptions. And Apple is willing to do that with both audio and video. And like audio, they did the Taylor Swift deal. They've done a few others. They've been, <laughs> Tim Cook has been helping out with videos apparently. But with this, they, they have a chance to make original programming. And whether it's Dr. Dre's uh, music show or it's Planet of the Apps or it's Carpool Karaoke. Uh, it's just ways to get people to see this and go, oh, word, I want to see more of this. I'm going to subscribe to Apple Music. And then it just drives the adoption of that service. It's a very, very nice I understand. Team. And if, if Apple's cloud services were working perfectly and they were creating new products and innovating, I would be less critical. But it, this, it well, seems like this is where Apple's innovating and that's not exciting. Well, me. no, they, they, they have, they've got a lot of interests now. And I don't mean financial interest. I mean that yeah. like a creator can, just like the Beatles, it took them a while to go from, hey, we're four lads who are doing like jangly love songs to Revolver and then to, right. and then to everything they're doing. after that. They're expanding their level of interest. And there isn't. it's not like there's a fixed number amount of interest and a fixed amount of attention that Apple can pay. Uh, they can have... They got so many, so many people. They got such a big campus that they can have a group working on this sort of stuff. So I don't think that's going to just. I, I don't think it's going to distract them from what, whatever they feel their mission is. Um, I I see this more as a really low risk way to experiment with original content without making a big. Uh, deep end of the pool splash into it. Uh, I think that uh, Renee makes a good point. I think that Apple would love to have uh, be as an important a driver of original content as Netflix is. And Netflix is as powerful as any independent studio has been in the past Absolutely. 50 years of the film industry. Uh, they, I don't think they're at a point yet where they can hope to do that. But what they can do is they can produce a couple of things that are very natural fits for Apple uh, that can be either a huge success or just be something they did. They said that we're glad we made it and we're not going to have, and then they never make another one again. Uh, just like, remember there's a time where Apple was sort of hit or miss between whether they're going to be live streaming uh, uh, keynote events and things like that. You never knew if they were going to do it uh, and maybe they wouldn't even announce it until a couple days before. A lot of those were trial balloons of we don't know if we have the server capacity. We're going to use this as an experiment to see can we handle how you, can we serve a huge amount of data to random people at a live event in a way that's consistent? And they could do that without announcing, we're here today to announce we're going to be a live streaming company. We have a live streaming product that's perfect and will revolutionize the industry. It's, it's not a problem if two days before you never announced that you were going to be live streaming this event, you decide that you can't live stream the event. Similarly, with this with this thing, if they have it does anything anything that results in any viewership whatsoever is a success with these original content, and then they come to the problem of how do who do we uh, who is going to be our Jimmy Iovine of attracting uh, filmmakers and TV producers to produce original content for Apple TV because that's that's this that's the biggest problem of them all. Actually, Ohm said buy Netflix. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, that, so, yeah, that's interesting because Apple Music is on Android and Netflix is on everything. I think my toaster has Netflix yeah. now. Yeah. It's just a matter of me writing all that code. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they're for sale, uh, but Apple certainly has the cash to do it. Or like Alex says, buy Disney, you know, buy, buy my Disney. Own, or just get yeah. into the, get into the programming. Right. Uh, they also have an exclusive on carpool karaoke, uh, but it won't be James Corden uh, doing it. So I don't know if you really can carry. <laughs> The well, I heard that it wasn't originally him. It was a different DJ started with Taylor Swift, and then he sort of adopted the segment. So maybe well, it's a little know, bit As I pointed out on, on, on Sunday, this is a long tradition. I mean, it goes back not just to Jerry F Seinfeld, the comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, but before that, Robert Llewellyn of right. uh, Red Dwarf, who did Carpool, uh, which is uh, wonderful. Was it Carpool? Yep, Carpool. Yeah, I, I was, both, I was, he, I was I a guest. Yep. You were too. It was great. Uh, uh, Bobby's not doing it anymore, but... Um, that, that was, I think, the earliest of these. And there is something magical about getting people together in a car. You yeah. just, you're, you let your hair down. I mean, if you I mean, can get... There's a love show and you're host proof, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I do also think that James Corden is what makes Carpool Karaoke good. Yeah. So, well, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, they'll have to find someone just as fun. I, I hope Michelle it's not Obama's Gary Vaynerchuk. Free, right? she, could, she could take over. Michelle's got some time. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I feel like Apple... I, it's just... Oh. Fix iTunes. I think we'll see. I'll see let me, let me, I mean, <laughs> this, people, this is something Leo, I swear. I, I'm, I'm very familiar with this sort of reaction because I, it's something that I've been navigating myself. And I think that a lot of it isn't Apple's fault. It's that uh, a lot of us old timers have this picture of Apple and who they are and what they're supposed to be. And I think that in my, and I can only speak for myself in my defense, I think that a lot of that sort of criticism is 
correct, or at least it's, it's very rational. But nonetheless, it, it, uh, some of this sort of criticism doesn't allow Apple to become something that we, I personally don't want it to be, even though it's something that they're they can do really well, even though there is a percentage of the people that would be much better served by this new version of Apple than by whatever old version of Apple that I'm imagining. And finally, whatever Apple was 10 years ago, it's only what I imagine that it was. It's not what it actually was because I've never worked for Apple. I've never, you know, only someone who's worked at the vice president level or above can correctly talk about here is what the purpose of Apple is right. and here is what, what the focus is. It's certainly so them. We got to kind of lose it. It's theirs to... Uh, you know, modify or fix. This is a long uh, think piece uh, with uh, Tim Cook from Fast Company. It was actually uh, uh, because they talk about right at the beginning, Eddie Q being disappointed about the Warriors' loss in the NBA playoffs. So the interview goes back a few months. Um, I, 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 you know, I think there's some, I think, oh boy, this is heresy to say, especially on an Apple uh, podcast. I think the jury's still out on whether Tim Cook has the vision to take Apple into the next thing uh there's no question he's a very good steward of the status quo i don't i well, don't just, see that vision i don't and i hate to see eddie q and phil schiller decide what apple's gonna be i, I would I, I would never make that accusation about tim only because sorry mr cook uh only because it's such an that's such an abstract sort of thing that uh, someone with vision well, you have to judge a company a, by what they're doing yeah, but it's the company that they ha that app that Tim Cook has in 2016 is not the same company that Steve Jobs had in yeah, 2007. No, I'm, I agree, and I'm just saying, I judging yeah. based on what the company in 2016 is, I don't know if Tim's really doing a good job. Again, it's profitable. It's, it's, again, I, I can't I can't say plus or plus or minus. I think that it's again such an abstract concept, and also. You know, you've evil, evil Knievel jumping buses at age 27 is exciting and awesome. Right. Evil Knievel at age 68, he shouldn't be jumping buses. <laughs> he should be he should be teaching the next generation. He, be, he should be designing uh, motorcycles that will jump buses, and he should be designing safety equipment. Yeah. Apple might not. Apple might be the company that's better at running the infrastructure uh, and creating the tools that young people use to create the next greatest thing, rather than trying to create the next greatest thing. No, now I'm that they you. have all the now yeah. that they have the burden of they have to continue to be to support itself at their current scale. Yeah. Remember that the the most of the engineering of a bridge is into making sure the weight of the bridge does not cause it, the bridge itself to collapse. And when you, a company gets to be a certain size, that in itself becomes a great amount of the work and the money and the time and the effort that goes into running the company. Yeah, and I'll be the first to say, A, uh, I, who am I to say? <laughs> B, just because they're not doing what I want them to do doesn't mean they're doing the wrong thing. C, the stock market loves them. D, they're making a ton of money. So uh, by every reasonable metric, they're doing fine. I just, I, when I see impossible. Apple saying we're going to do, you know, TV shows and we can't fix iTunes and iCloud's falling apart, and I just... and. I mean, it's, it's all like one of the hardest things here is competing with a ghost because no matter what Tim Cook does, he'll right. never be Steve Jobs. No, and, and I we don't, don't want know him what to Steve be. Jobs would be like today. Like if Steve Jobs no. had to run a modern right. Apple, we might not be temperamentally or, you know, he, he might have a different skill set. And the trick to Apple has always been a dynamic. Like as much as Steve Jobs was in front, he, they, the old the old saying was, you know, only Steve Jobs could think of an iPad, but only Tim Cook could have made right. it ship. Understand. Uh, and, they just need, like Tim Cook can be that position. He can be that person. They just need to figure out what that product person is to compliment him the same way he complimented Steve Jobs. And maybe it's Johnny Ivan. Maybe it's it's three or four people to make that dynamic. And once that that clicks, it's, and maybe it's click now, and it's just there's a lot of, we're in a lot of takes turbulence, a while. and it's yeah. hard to see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I think that as long as you have those sort of pillars, you can build a phenomenal foundation on them. Yeah. I'm just raising the issue. I agree. It sounds, yeah. it's stupid, <clears throat> and uh, I probably shouldn't say it. But, uh, but I'm starting to get this niggling feeling that uh, I don't, I'm just not crazy about, and you're the right, Andy, I'm nostalgic gone. about the way Apple used to gone. be. And they're, <laughs> But they're also facing, like, uh, Steve Jobs at his height, like at that iPhone press conference, that was something new and amazing. Right. It was something we really hadn't seen before, and we filled that gap. All that slack has been taken up right. now, and it's really unclear. There, there will not be another iPhone style product. It's just the laws, like the opportunities that things have to come together to make that happen, to make a business more profitable than Exxon uh, that you hold in your hand. Right. It's just stupefying. So Tim Cook is living in a world where I, he came into this job with iPhone and iPad being done. And it's sort of his job. All right, like, 
uh, Steve Jobs got the car to 200 and we're saying, okay, Steve, get it to, sorry, Tim, get it to 300. Right. And he's like, well, it's a car. Right. You know, so he's got to invent the plane and that, that takes a long time. Yep. Yep. Let's take a break. We'll take a, the August update on the Apple campus is in. We're getting close. It's almost done. Uh, and we have lots more uh, to talk about, including a dolphin <laughs> that stole. <laughs> well, it did what many of us want to do. Took the iPad out of the hand of a lady who wasn't watching the show. <laughs> Dolphins are smart. Now, I hope you're watching the show. <laughs> Probably what the lady was doing on her iPad was reading a magazine on texture. That's what I have been doing. If you're bored, if you're on an airplane, if you're at the supermarket. What a pro. What a pro. <laughs> that, that is decades of professional broadcasting, ladies and gentlemen. That I do these for you, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> texture lets you read the best magazines without, you're not really subscribing to them. You're subscribing to Texture, which gives you literally dozens, hundreds of magazines on your iPad, your iPhone, your tablet. You can read them anytime. And it's, you know, what I love about it is you not only get the, the magazines you probably would subscribe to, The New Yorker for me or National Geographic, Popular Science, uh, People or Us, uh, Rolling Stone. These are magazines that are so good every month or every week that you're going to want to get every edition. Of course, you do. But you also get things like, I don't know, Ad Age, which I probably wouldn't want to read every, every week, but sometimes there's really good stuff in there. Or recipes uh, from, uh, you know, Bon Appetit, or, or or maybe you want to know what the Billboard charts are. Are you going to run out to the store and, if you could, even buy a copy of Billboard? You're certainly not going to subscribe. It's hundreds of dollars a year. You get all of this on your iPad in texture. And it's, by the way, the whole magazine. It's all of Consumer Reports. It's all of Vanity Fair. It's all of Rolling Stone. Every page. You even get benefits that you can't get in a print magazine. Bonus features like video, search, that kind of stuff. You also get past... Uh, magazines, you know, and you, what you don't get is the coffee table clutter, the great expense and the kind of, you know, the feeling I'm killing trees and I didn't read that magazine this year. Over 200 of the world's best magazines in one app. Try it free right now. Texture.com slash twit. And I'll tell you a little pro tip, a little secret. One account access on up to five devices. So basically think of it as a family plan. Lisa has the subscription, but I read my magazines on my iPad. She reads her magazines on her iPad. It is great. It's like Netflix for magazines. T-E-X-T-U-R-E. Texture.com slash twit. Try it free. Uh, and then I think you'll probably want to subscribe. It's it, Especially for summertime. Beach reading. Man, it's awesome. Texture.com slash twit. Here, ladies and gentlemen, the Apple campus in 4K. I don't know if this is HDR or not. <laughs> it really, it's, it's starting to take shape. Still a lot of sand. A lot of piles. You know how much of milk you're gonna need for that donut? Oh man, you know it's one mile in circumference, fifteen hundred meters across, a garden and a pond. The reason that all the sand, it's gonna be inside. It'll be a garden and a pond. I a hundred thousand square because foot. Because they didn't center. have at least one rally cross day. During the construction. <laughs> it's not over I yet. Can't respect. I can't respect them. Look at baseball and tennis courts. You know, of course, the, the challenge for any company in Silicon Valley is to attract the best talent right out of college. And this is this is how you do it. You have an amazing campus with all these 100,000 square foot fitness center right there. So people stay and work late and uh, and they want to work there. Yeah. yeah. Not only that, but that's the security okay. kiosk. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's a, yeah. So Those are machine so gun for, turrets, aren't they? For the first. No, actually, for the first time, I'm thinking. There must, if they're building everything that they could possibly hope and dream of, are there like not cells, but like secure, oh. lockable rooms with cameras in them where they can oh. take people who are naughty at, at oh. events? My or at goodness. least that they schedule a meeting someplace where they know that they're at least communicating that if you wanted to fight us, we would. <laughs> I don't think there's Apple jail. I really don't. I hope like not. Like Disney, it's underground. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you think, though, they're going to have to build a pretty big wall around this thing? Because I want to immigrate. I'm, <laughs> I'm moving in. This is, 
This is, this is the role of architecture. Uh, when a company reaches a certain level, it's not just we need to house a certain number of people and we need a certain uh, facility. It's also we want to build a permanent structure on the planet that when people go by it, it distinctly communicates who we are. Right. And ideally in 100 years, we'll still be here and this will still be an expression of if, if we had a flag, if we had uh, our own money, we would have this on our money and on our flag. The only thing that makes me sad is that, in fact, I will never be allowed through those gates. Ever. Ever. Oh, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> do, I, do I have to be the do I have to be the Dean Martin that gets Jerry Lewis? The, no, do, I don't. Do I, do I have to be the, the Frank Sinatra who gets Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin back together? I'm so tired of you, you, you saying you that you're... you called him. <laughs> no. I, I, that's fine. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Go and, visit iTunes there. And meanwhile, we're, we're rolling glue on the floor of our... <laughs> Tiny little studio. <laughs> Our studio the, would fit in that parking lot. <laughs> there you where's go. Your the new Aptal campus. Oh, they're putting in the carpet now. Look at that. <sighs> <laughs> oh, here's the round theater. The round theater. Show this. This is the. Uh, this is the. Uh, this is where they're. This is going to be the new uh, uh, place where they're going to show. It does look like Minecraft, doesn't it? Oh, and then if the press are bad, they're going to flood it with water. Yeah. Now, now that I look at it, I so want that entire structure to be retractable. Yeah. Ooh. Just, sh and flatten down to the bottom and become so, like dun, a baseball dun. pool. The reason it looks like Minecraft, those those are foam blocks that they put on top of the underground structures for insulation, and they put they'll put dirt on top of that. That's so. how they pack more batteries into the. Thanks <laughs> by staggering that terrace to, the terrace to layout. I love this. Look at all the uh, solar cells. These will be on top oh, of the God. parking structure and the uh, and the building itself. Yeah. Renee, Renee I don't, let, let's compare notes. Uh, have you two decided? I've got here are the eleven people I know at Apple that can give <laughs> me the biggest tour of this place when it's done, and the order in which I will start hinting that I want to spend two days just being a given given a tour of this place. Mm. Oh, yeah. It really looks oh. incredible. We promised Apple to give you good coverage forever if you just let <laughs> us bring our cameras in. <laughs> Can we have a review unit? I mean, please. <laughs> exactly. I want a we review unit of the Apple campus too. Days. Yes, I do. Yes. Look at that. Wow. These drone shots are, are incredible. And the drone is like right next to the building, right yeah. next to the crane. You got at this point, thank you, Matthew Roberts, for for making this. At this point, you got to figure Apple is. And by the way, what have I done to deserve this YouTube? Every time I watch a YouTube video, they suggest bikini clad. <laughs> I just watched the Apple campus. So the GoPro, that makes sense. Space in 4K, more Apple campus videos. Sure. By all means, keep the picture up. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I, don't, I don't watch those videos. I don't know why they keep proffering them to me. I know. It's 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 it's, it's, weird it's probably SEO. Stuff. They probably keyword stuffed it with Apple Campus. Apple Campus. Oh, he must want to see bikinis. Yeah. Okay. No, the bikini video is like let's get all those Apple Campus video views. I'm just gonna <laughs> Apple Campus too. Apple Donut. Apple Spaceship. Well, and best plus Apple it's YouTube, so you know that that is one frame in a four-hour video that has nothing else About of interest. Carrots. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'm starting to wonder about the, the the drone footage, though. I have to. I recently have. To, I, I have to get a, a dro an FAA drone operator's license for a project that I'm going to be doing in the next couple of months. And so I had to start looking at what the rules are. And at least in Massachusetts, uh, you're prohibited against flying it over private property unless you have permission of the property owner. I think that's nationwide. I, I think that's an FAA rule. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's, that's FAA. So I, don't, I I'm not I'm not suggesting anything. I'm, I'm no nor am I doing the national political candidate thing of saying I don't know what's going on as a way of suggesting that I know what's going on and that this is what's going on. I'm I'm, cur I'm curious as to how often you could I'm I'm curious if there's if there if there the wink wink nut if the unofficial policy inside of Apple is that actually we love we've seen these videos they're really really cool we're going to turn a blind eye I and think we're not going to use the, we're not we're but not we're not going to use one of those cranes to we're not going to use one of those cranes to try to swat it away, <laughs> even though we have the software that could absolutely do that. And I'd like to say, if you want to take drone footage of the new Twit Studios, be my guest. <laughs> Just leave the back door open so Leo can get yeah, in. Would you leave the back door open? <laughs> we, we have the Nest Cam. Thank God we have the Nest Cam. Okay. There you go. Boy, that's gripping. Gripping footage of the guy putting the carpet squares on the previously glued 
raised floor. Put a chat room studio. monitor in the bathroom. That way the chat room can tell John if you get locked. Oh, oh that's so a good idea. That's an audio feed that people want to check in on. That's a great idea. No, no, right? just no, the, chat the chat room. Oh. I'm stuck in the bathroom. Tell John. Tell Karsten. <laughs> I'm sounds, in the... That sounds, like, that sounds like a great Arduino project. Just a big red button. That if you slap it, it <laughs> just does help. nothing but like send something to the cat saying, okay, I'm locked in the bathroom. That's all we do. We have a little, uh, we have a doorbell in effect. That could be the, it could be this, that was easy button. And you just slap it. And it just orders more, and then more toilet paper arrives. Yeah. Right. Still oh, oh damn it. Who arrives. used the dash button? <laughs> Apple, uh, Apple is finally. Get me Apple out of here or get me a USB charger. <laughs> for a long time, Apple eschewed bug bounties. Yes. Uh, saying this is a bad idea because it just encourages uh, people to find bugs. No, because it, uh, we don't want to get in the position of paying people to find bugs because we can't compete with the government, which will give you a million bucks. I don't know. There are lots of reasons, but they're doing it now. Weirdly, though, it's invite only. Explain that to me, Renee. I don't understand that at so all. So I had a chance to talk to the people behind the, the program at Apple. And what they said is there's there's two things. One is the reason they're doing it is because they feel like exploits are getting much more difficult to find. As iOS has been hardened, it's it's rare. Oh, that that's a good sort of spin. Oh, <laughs> our stuff has gotten so secure. We've got well, to pay stuff, people to I mean, find in bugs. General, um, like they they would get reports, but the Leo researcher couldn't afford to spend back time back. on the reports. Like they would just say, <laughs> we found a bug. Yes! <laughs> well, so, so no, so it's not. It's not that the the, the amount of time a researcher a researcher was willing to spend on it oh. was no longer significant because they would find one, hand it off, go on to the next thing. And what Apple wants to do is establish a relationship and actually dedicate Apple engineering resources to uh, the people in this program. And they want to start small and provide a very high level of service so that you have dedicated people to talk to. Uh, and they sort of vet it and they know that, you know, you, you found this bug, you're going to hand it off, they're going to work with you on it on identifying it, on patching it, and then they're going to grow the program over time. But it's How much are they exclusive. paying? Is it a lot of money? It seems like a lot of money. Yeah. No, it's 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 for a company. It's really good. I mean, I think yeah. it goes up to five hundred thousand for some of the wow. exploit. Uh, sorry, two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand for a firmware uh, secure boot exploit. A uh, hundred thousand for uh, what is that? Extraction, Extraction of, of confidential, confidential material, material yeah. in the secure, secure enclave. enclave. They'll never pay in. that bounty, I don't think. And it's up to, and there's two really cool things. One is that if you decide, like, if you don't need the money, you're going to donate to charity. Apple can match the charitable donation. Yeah. Uh, so it can be up to double this. That's nice. But also, if you find a bug and you're not part of the program, they'll still work with you. It's not exclusive in any way. It's just these are the people they're going to continuously be working with. And if you find something, you just come and tell them, and either they'll just work with you as a one-off, or they'll invite you to to join the program. Almost uh, every other company does have a bug bounty program. Some of them quite yes. public. Uh, yeah. And uh, so this is I. <clears throat> I understand Apple's reluctance to bid up the the process, and, and one of the problems is. You get people uh, like Dan Kaminsky, for instance, who every year would collect flaws so that he could win the Pwn to Own contest at Kensec West, and he did for many years. So many, so many. And what you really want to do is give these people some incentive not to save up so that they can get a free yeah. laptop, but actually get some money uh, so that they can reveal the bug to Apple sooner. And it also incents them not to reveal it publicly, right? Yeah, and it's a different kind of person. So it's not, I don't, doesn't sound like they're really targeting someone who might already be working for organized crime or for, you know, a terrorist network or for a government for that matter. It's people who really are researchers who are in it for doing security research. And either they just need help, they need resources, uh, or if they're already affluent, they, they just want to do something good. Like it's people who want to do the right thing and disclose to the company in a responsible and ethical way. And it's an, a way to either help them do that or sort of help fulfill one of their charitable wishes for doing that. It's, it's Apple style. It's very small. They're starting off toe in the water. But I think that once they get a sense of doing it, they'll scale it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? The gun emoji. I guess we should talk about that. <laughs> so <laughs> They should have just gone with a phaser. That's what, uh, who was it that did a phaser for a while? Google or somebody had a, uh, yeah, a or ray gun. Or Han Solo's blaster. So, Microsoft, ironically, switched the other way. So Microsoft, that's who did it, right? They had yeah. a phaser. So uh, there is an emoji, a gun emoji. Now, the way emojis work, it's part of the Unicode specification. So the Unicode consortium is uh, who determines what emojis are available. They don't actually give you, a, they give you a description. They don't tell you what the emoji has to look like. So Twitter, Google... Apple, Microsoft, everybody has their own emoji, their own version. Uh, Apple decided uh, in iOS 10 to change what looked like, um, I guess, a 38 police special, something like that, into 
a squirt gun, a, clearly a child's toy with an orange tip. Um, and you know what? That's that's exactly what you'd expect of those hippies. But uh, <laughs> they live in apricot orchards. <laughs> <Yeah>. But <laughs> I think they're actually prune orchards, but uh, orchards, but. Uh, <laughs> No, literally, I think that's the the whole Silicon Valley used to be prune orchards, but uh, in fact, the the big mall near Apple is called the Prune Yard. Nice, mm. not a great name for a mall. I'm just saying, <laughs> but boy, is it regular. It's it's, it's historic. <laughs> I used to get my hair cut at the Prune Yard. Uh, there is an interesting issue, and the Emojipedia folks uh, raise this issue, which is it is more than a political statement. You know, when you change the gun for a squirt gun, that's a political statement, right? And we want to make it family-friendly or whatever. And actually, I thought it was a great idea. They point out that because people on other platforms will see a realistic-looking gun, when you say, and they give an example, uh, when you send a tweet that says, <laughs> hey, we're going to have a party at the local park, 2 o'clock tomorrow, bring your squirt guns to people on Android iOS 9, Windows Phone, Samsung, it'll look like you're saying bring your real pistol. Mm. I don't know. Is that a problem? Well, Depends it's, how you it's not your just, contacts. It's not, it's not just that. and It's something that goes beyond just the gun emoji. It's that you're, cre you're crafting a message on your phone that before you click send makes perfect sense to you. But then when you send it, it might a different emoji might yeah. turn up that modifies even just in, my, in a minute way the the, the message that you're sending. Now so, here, by the way, is this also from Emojipedia? Bring cookies, and instead of cookies, if you're using a Samsung Galaxy, you get crackers. Oh people, my why God! Is people, that on tech people, meme? I mean, this is such a double are, standard. People aren't going to be people aren't going to be saying, oh, "Here's here's the shopping list. I want you to emoji emoji emoji." No, bring not, do not use I emojis think, for a shopping it's, list. They're, they're not even going to, it's crackers. It's going to be things like <laughs> someone someone who is not uh, who who. I don't know, maybe a little bit unsophisticated is going to reply to a text uh, with some of some serious news with an emoji that they think means on their device means that I'm really, really concerned and sorry for you, but I'm angry at that person who did that wonderful, th that terrible thing that got you all sad. When it comes on their end, it means <laughs> it's, there's a little an eyebrow that that is arched on your end is actually double arched on theirs, and it means that wow, you're such a loser for even being offended by this thing that this sensible person did to you. So it's I mean, emoji can't be it's it's a dangerous thing when it's used in term in place of real conversation as opposed to putting stickers on things. I think stickers are more useful in that sense because they're explicitly, hey, I'm just decorating what I'm saying. This is not the message that I'm actually saying. It would it, behoove you. Here's a interesting. Kind of link baity article from last year on Motherboard. What the emoji you're sending actually looked like to your friends, Megan Neal, uh, did actually collate different emojis from different platforms to, to there is some disconnect, you know, I mean, in, you know, um, <laughs> you could send a lady in a flamenco outfit and you could get some guy in a t-shirt yeah. dancing, right? Yeah. Uh, um, I think Gruber identified a really big problem, and that is while Apple changed the icon, they did not align it with the water. So now you just, it's just impossible to actually make a. The water's coming the water. out the wrong way. I know. I mean, this is Apple. They're Son supposed to be designed. My biggest Remember, beef is that when you squirt once, really somebody, like somebody else Unicode. you're squirting three times back at yourself. <laughs> what I would like Unicode to fix, and maybe someone at Apple can help me, is I, I need to be able to long press on the French fries and get poutine, oh, tater tots, yeah. baked potato, and potato chips. I think you're that right. That just needs to be solved. I think we need that. It's like it's 2016, and I'm I'm sending French fries like an animal. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, it is it is a, a a deeper problem now that people are actually using it. Another problem that I've uh, that I've seen discussed is how do you do audible text based on this stuff? There are standards for it, but you have to make sure that your your first goal is not that you make this thing look cool graphically, but that it absolutely matches the intent that uh, people it's an can't alphabet. really see what you're doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Exactly, it's communication. Yeah. yeah, they should have visual standards as well as just a description because it's something that if it is a standard, it needs to be a standard so that I know that if I send Andy the grimacing face because it makes me like kind of nervous on iOS, he doesn't see me sticking my tongue out at him on Android and wonder, you know, what did I do? Yeah. I mean, that, that's a real communications problem, and it will yep. only be fixed by having visual standards. But again, if, and, and again, if I if I can't see the screen, if I'm if I'm relying on the OS to speak aloud to me what's on the screen, that's even doubly more important. I think that I, I don't know what happens. I don't know if there's any sort of facility where if you do a hover or maybe a deep press action on an emoji, it'll say here's what the here's what the standard of this describes this as. Is this really what you want to do? Oh, that's interesting. 
In that uh, interview uh, with um, uh, Tim Cook from Fast Company, uh, there was – Huh? I'll, I'll say that I, I read it because it was it was linked uh, so many places. There was a really high ratio a of, of pros. The, yeah. the writer describing <laughs> yeah. what the environment was like yeah. and the environment at Apple and the news. A three to, minute and interview. Then, there, then there'd be like one quote about, yeah. "Hey, here's our, how our basketball team is doing." It's like okay, it's, and it was a lot of setup. Like Apple is doing, but no, it's not. This problem is struggling, <sighs> but no, it's not. So it was a lot of that's a that's a know. now Rick Tetzelli, by the way, is the the guy who wrote this article is the guy who also wrote I think probably the best book about Steve Jobs becoming Steve Jobs. So it's not like this guy doesn't have a lot of experience. He covered right, Apple right. for, uh, is it the Post Intelligencer for a Seattle newspaper, I think. But he's been there for a while. And oh, he's, 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 a, he's a very strong guy. Yeah. But maybe it was a thin <clears throat> interview. Uh, I don't interview CEOs. Yeah. Uh, I don't like to interview CEOs because they're very managed. They know it looks what like he had good access, though. I mean, he was well, sitting he down. He did. He was Craig in the cafe, and, right? Yeah. Is in the yeah, well, it, it, it depends. I mean, I've um, I interviewed uh, the CEO of, of Vesos for an hour, and it really was a conversation where there was a there was a PR person in the room, but uh, the her real her only interaction was when uh, I had used an idiom that he didn't understand as a non-native English speaker, right. and he translated. Uh, it varies, of course. It varies, I mean, of course. I, I, I mean, interviewing there, Scott I, McNeely is always an adventure. <laughs> there are CEOs yeah. who need to have, like, the PR person wants to be there to jump in front yeah, of them because right. they never know what they're going to say. But uh, somebody like Tim yeah. Cook, a, 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 a CEO who has self-control, uh, usually CEOs. says nothing yeah. of interest uh, except the company's uh talking points and is very adept at no, keeping those very on message yeah he's on message that's the way to put it however at eq he's completely <laughs> in this cannon the he's, warriors yeah, that's where it hurts <laughs> the warriors it's killing me he was, he was a little sad it was the day after the warriors lost the playoffs he said uh we made significant changes to all of our development processes because of the apple maps failure to all of us yep. living in cupertino the maps here were pretty good the problem wasn't obvious to us. We'll never be able to take it out to a large number of users to get feedback. And that's why Apple is now doing the public betas, which I think uh, is in, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. They, 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 they missed it on Maps. They don't want to miss it again. Uh, and Maps was a really interesting case because the Maps app itself was pretty well done, but the data, like it just it, the data aggregation, sanitization, presentation, you would have mal malformed phone numbers. You know, it's just all these disparate sources just didn't get in there in any in any real usable way, and that's a problem that beta testing absolutely would have identified for. Did them. they call Apple Maps beta when they released it? I don't recall. They should, they have. Really should have. That yeah. might have I mean, made Siri it. was in beta. Right, Siri's still in beta, isn't it? I don't. I think it's, it's beta for a long time. Yeah. But yeah, there, there is nothing in like there is no no matter how competent, there is no amount of QA that can catch what a million, 10 million, a hundred million people will find using your software in their day-to-day -day lives and their unique use cases. And it just it is so valuable that if you as a company can set that up, especially at Apple scale, totally not easy because you got to have someone, you know, intercepting all those bugs and uh, checking them and making sure they get to the right place and you know getting rid of all the ones that are just random characters and things but if you can run that then your software is going to be so much better which is why i think it's great they're doing that for both ios and mac os now yeah and yeah, not not only that but it's a it's a it's an advantage that uh, google and uh, uh, it's an advantage that google and microsoft have are you in the themselves. disney it's a small world after all exhibit uh, you can't tell because behind him it could be anything. <laughs> exactly. No, actually, I recognize that ringtone. <laughs> I know exactly what that is. Uh, there is a. Uh, <laughs> there, there's an advantage that uh, again. I, Andy, I, I I'm shocked that you use standard ringtones. You, that's the first thing I change on a new well, phone. Well, that's well because that's how often I get an actual phone yeah. call. There you go. <laughs> it's, like, it's the last. Thing, it's right. the last thing I think to change. Right. Um, and also, I need something that I recognize. I don't. I, I don't want to have like my favorites. I don't. Wanna, if, if I have like a favorite song or favorite piece of music that I like, if I attach that to a ringtone, Pav, my Pavlovian response after a month is like, "Oh my God, it's it's hey hey why is <laughs> they're why calling is hey Jude me?" Playing? Right. There's a, I don't. I don't know who's playing "Hey Jude" at me. It's but I know I'm gonna have to now talk to someone that I, I know. Didn't, I wasn't prepared to talk to a human being today. So, I did that with Baba O'Reilly, uh, the Great oh. Who song. It's a really good ringtone, but it spoiled the song forever for me. So it's exactly yeah. Um, I was like my my com my comic book shop bought a new phone and it was the same as the phone I had in my office uh -huh. and I almost and for like three months until I had a, I literally bought a new phone for my office because every time I I'm, a, I'm at the comic book store I'm just there to relax I'm taking a break and I hear the the ATT like yeah. ah. 
I, I, I did. I, I know I filed my story before I left the house. Oh God, oh, damn it! What's wrong? What was wrong? Like, okay, I can't. It's do just that. the comic book. This is the ringtone oh. for the One Plus One, which I haven't changed actually, because I kind of like it. It's lovely. It has to. It's ringtones are. It's. I'd love to talk to someone who designs ringtones because you notice that the good ones have to like cover the entire range of human hearing because you don't know where right. someone's deficient. Right. And so there's there must be such a science in it, and I bet the High people who are low. good at it are good in ways that those the rest of us can never figure out why they're so good. He's at like, a good like a good jingle writer. Uh, actually, uh, uh, that's why the marimba, the original iPhone yeah. ringtone, is is uh, li li a classic, literally. And you still hear it on TV shows and stuff. And you go, oh, I got an iPhone. TV shows have just gotten around the planet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I know Andy has a Samsung phone somewhere nearby. Ah, uh, no, it's a Nexus. Oh, Nexus. Nexus. That's what it is. Yes. Um, but I was going to say is that in, in regards of releasing a new software, it's a it's a micro. So oftentimes, the pain that we uh, experience is in some way self inflicted, and in Apple, their secrecy and their refusal, their their institutional idea of we don't talk about things until we actually ship them. That's a pain that they have invited upon themselves. Uh, Google and Microsoft can be at a developers conference and say, "Here's something we're thinking about doing," and we're basically, and then three months later, okay, we're going to let ten thousand people use this new mail service that we don't that we're working on and so not only do they learn about that but the first waves of people know that this is not designed to be this is not necessarily the greatest finished polished thing that they've ever made this is something they're still working on uh and so it's it's so apple sometimes invites new pain upon themselves when the first time that we are officially aware that apple's working on a mapping product is when they're on the stage saying we honestly think this is the best mapping system that's ever been made no, it isn't because the Statue of Liberty isn't in Boston, Boston Common. That's the Sol Soldiers and Sailors Memorial. I know because the postcards are totally different there. Uh, now we have a little, we've had a little time inside Andy's brain. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Please. Uh, Top of the gift shop. Apple's going to license it for, for the next show. Inside Out with Andy and Otko. Buy a T-shirt. <laughs> Our show today, we're going get, to get your uh, picks ready, uh, gentlemen. Our show, we're going to do those in a moment. Our show today brought to you by Gazelle. We are now, the clock is ticking. We believe we're less than 30 days away from a new iPhone. Why is that important? Because you want to kind of get your quote from Gazelle at the maximum distance from the time you're going to get the new phone. Because, I know this is complicated, but because the price of the phone is always going down a little bit every day, right? So the thing about the Gazelle quote, it's guaranteed it's locked in for 30 days. So if you can, this is, this is what you want. And I think you might, you might be right in a position to do this. If you can get that quote 30 days before you're going to buy a new phone, man, you're golden. Because you have that quote and they, can't, they cannot change it even though the price or the value of your phone is going down. So if you think you're buying a new iPhone or a new device of any kind, visit gazelle.com and at least get a quote. If you get a quote, then you know how much it's worth. And you certainly... Don't want to throw that old phone in a drawer, let it gather dust. You wouldn't do that with a $100 bill. Why would you do that with your phone? For trade-ins, shipping is free. The payment is fast. You can get a, a check, a PayPal credit, or an Amazon gift card. And the reason I usually get that is because they bump it up by 5%. So it's a little bit more valuable. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Go to gazelle.com to see what your old device is worth. And while you're there, check out the selections of certified pre-owned devices as well that's right they sell iphone 6s iphone 6s pluses ipads and samsung galaxy phones gently used fully inspected 30-day return policy Ooh, they're selling macbooks and ipads now they've they've expanded their line that's cool uh, everything is sold without a carrier contract but it all will work on all the major u.s carriers you can even get financing. They have financing on all devices from a firm, and you do it right at checkout. You provide some basic information. You'll get approved instantly and pay in 3, 6, or 12 months. It's just great. They also offer 12-month warranties now powered by Assurant for cell phones and iPads. That covers not just, you know, hardware defects, but cracked screens and water damage. Gazelle. I love Gazelle. Save a little money on a pre-owned device. Get a little money on an old device you don't want anymore. Just pay it. Pass it forward. Pay it forward. It's kind of like the best kind of recycling. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E. Gazelle.com. Check them out today. Now, and remember, 30 days. 
30 days. Actually, you might want to wait a little longer, right? Because you want 30 days from the day you get your new iPhone or the day after, day before you get your new iPhone. No, day after. Have one day to transfer. The <laughs> okay, obviously I'm overthinking this. But you Sell <laughs> now, use a burner phone, and then right when the price is high. and then Okay, get you're iPhone. right. It's true. You want to maximize the price. Renee Ritchie, your pick of the week. So I just put it down behind me. Um, so this is all the fault of Serenity Caldwell. I'm going to blame her for a lot of things Everything today. Everything is. Everything She is. bought a pair of these and then did a review on them. The Bose Quiet Comfort 35 Bluetooth oh, headphones. Everybody loves those. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because like for you used to Bluetooth sort of sounding like the probe droid from Empire. You know, because it's just the bandwidth is so insufficient. And because all the talk about Apple jettisoning, jettisoning the headphone jack, I wanted to try the state of Bluetooth headphones. And I had, I tried the Beats ones and they were okay. And then I tried uh, Serenity's headphones the last time I saw her. She was in Montreal a couple of weeks ago and they were just fantastic. They sounded better than a lot of, well, I guess, any Bluetooth headphone I've, I've heard before. So I picked up a pair of them. They come in this very nice, you know, if you've used to Bose, they come in this very nice uh, carrying case. It fits right in your pocket before you go on the airplane. But they are really nice phones. They're not exactly a style that would have gotten on my own, but the Bluetooth sound by itself, uh, it's phenomenal. I'm not an audiophile. I don't have, you know, Marco Armand ears for things like this, but I, I can tell when it's really badly distorted Bluetooth sound. And I started getting really interested in Bluetooth when the Apple TV had it, because sometimes there's other people in the room and you just want to watch something or they're playing games or, you know, they're just running around and noising. You put them on and you're just watching your show and you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, and then the Apple Watch, of course, doesn't have a headphone jack. So Bluetooth headphones really useful for those but i had the little sporty ones these just these feel like real grown-up earphones and this is just i guess the current state of bluetooth and i don't know if apple will have any of their own proprietary magic that they'll layer on top of it uh, but even if they're if they're this good i'll be pretty happy i'm not happy with the battery life running out because uh, it seems like just when you're really enjoying the noise canceling it fails on you and then the, the whole world comes crashing in again but battery life is what it is and they do have a little jack plug that you can use to put in normally like a normal set of earphones you're not totally left out but i was really pleasantly surprised and i think if you are sort of if you really want bluetooth headphones you don't want ones that are just little sporty ones you want actual cans you can put on your head and sound quality does matter to you these are really really good headphones nice and not cheap 450 no. bucks the future is never cheap <clears throat> yeah uh comfortable yeah very comfortable i mean they go sort of they're I mean, I would call them over the ear, but I have big grappling mangled ears, so they kind of sit a little bit on for me, but I've had no problem with them. I'm not that to take them off at all. They don't have microphones, though. I'm thinking because if, if iPhone 7 doesn't have a headphone jack, some of us will probably turn to wireless headphones. I, they don't. I, actually, I've never tried using. I don't use my phone as a phone. Ever since Don Milton put a web browser on a phone, I've just never used <laughs> I know, the phone part I know, anymore. I know. I'm with you. <laughs> uh, but I think they might have, because there is a little hole. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they do have a built-in. I'll right. just test it out. I think the hole is probably for the noise cancellation. The jack. Yeah, maybe, yeah, that's probably yeah, true. Yeah. Um, interesting. Yeah. I Actually, if somebody has a recommendation to uh, for uh, headphones, wireless headphones, that can also be used for talking into, but sound good for music. That's the problem. Usually those are different. In fact, like the Battlestar Galactica headset with the two ears and the... Right. And it's also a different uh, Bluetooth profile, isn't it? There's A2DP for the yeah. high quality music, but you have to use the headset profile. It, yeah, it, Bluetooth hands-free. There's hands -free. like, I think, yeah. 12 different Bluetooth yeah. protocols. Huh. This might be something unsolved. Maybe Apple will so solve it. I bet you there's a Beats in your future. Uh, hey, Andy Anako, what do you got for us? A couple of weeks, I was pretty excited about uh, the new version of Scrivener, my favorite word processor, uh, making it to iOS. Uh, and uh, a lot of people ask, well, why do you, why, uh, what's the difference between Scrivener and another popular text editor for iOS and for the Mac called Ulysses? Uh, because they're both the same, uh, kind of the same category where your interface is not necessarily I'm opening a doc, I'm closing a doc, so much as I'm opening a workspace that contains a bunch of documents that are organized together into folders, uh, and this is my workspace for a specific project. Uh, the difference between Ulysses and, uh, and uh, Scrivener is that Ulysses is uh, specifically a text-based editor. It doesn't allow a lot of the data types, a lot of the external the PDFs, images, sound files. Uh, what, I, uh, what I like to say is that 
uh, uh, Scrivener really is the is the electric guitar. The uh, uh, Ulysses is the acoustic guitar. But they're both really great tools for people who are, uh, work on writing projects, as opposed to just dashing off little things. Although they both work great for those things too. Uh, but Ulysses just released 2.6, a big upgrade uh, in which they brought uh, two great features to the iOS app. Uh, first, uh, uh, full access to Dropbox. Uh, Dropbox is an equal uh, favored nation's file source uh, for the iOS app. So you can have all of your documents on Dropbox and use it on the Ulysses version, uh, excuse me, the desktop version and the iOS version. Uh, and they also added uh, integration with WordPress. So now you can write and publish direct to your WordPress blog, whether it's on uh, WordPress.com or whether it's a self-hosted blog directly from Ulysses. And it works really, really great. Uh, and they had a couple other enhancements too, but that those two in itself are just huge, huge, huge moves forward. And they were really hard to implement as well as they did uh, as they did here. Um, and uh, Ulysses, the, yeah, another difference between Ulysses and uh, uh, and Scrivener is that Ulysses is really one of those uh, those uh, new revolutionary ideas where we're going to try to give you a writing environment that removes as many distractions as possible that lets you to really focus on what you're doing. Uh, and it works great on the Mac, but it works even better on iOS where you can't have overlapping windows and you can really just get right into the writing group. They actually added a couple of new features uh, to both versions of it uh, toward that event, uh, toward that extent, uh, where you can actually have it into uh, not just typewriter mode where instead of tap 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 tap, tap scroll tap 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 where the typewriter the the text scrolls up as you type but you can also also have the like tunnel vision where the only thing that's in clear sharp black and white focus is the line that you're actually writing <laughs> so you're really not looking at what did i just write do i need to fix that you can only just really focus on the actual words you're typing at that time uh, and it sounds like a gimmick but it's gimmicks that will get you <laughs> to, to the end of your novel or the end of whatever report you have to write so uh, ulysses is one of the greatest word processors you can buy on ios or mac and this is a significant upgrade and it's worth the i think it's what's 20 bucks i think uh, it's not it's it's uh, it's, it's priced uh, at 44 bucks for the Mac version, 25 bucks for the iOS version, and I'm glad that they're charging actual money for it. It's not a not a huge amount of money, but enough that you feel as though you're contributing to the value of the product and you're also helping the people who created it uh, to uh, pay their rent and uh, raise their children, which makes me very happy. And, and in this great. case, the new features are worth the uh, upgrade. Absolutely. Major, major upgrade. Yeah. Partic again, yeah. particularly if you publish a WordPress. The WordPress has their own uh, iOS app, but it's a little bit weird. Uh, I've never really enjoyed using it. I always use the web interface uh, and I've been doing using the uh, using Ulysses to put things onto uh, the Sun-Times uh, WordPress site oh, nice. uh, and it's been really it, it feels as though you are you, you are uh, uh, Ford Prefect publishing something to the Hitchhiker's Guide. You've written something, you press a button, it's on the CMS, you're done. As opposed to Okay, now I'm going to call my editor or send him a text yeah. message and see if he knows, see if he sees this on the server yet. <laughs> so it's good stuff. I have to say, I I, uh, I really praise WordPress for having an API. I think yeah. uh, I think that's so great. That means there's a lot of well, remember J Daniel Jalka. Uh, there's yeah. others who have made great blogging programs uh, because there's an API. Yeah. Yeah, really you, you, nice. aren't, you aren't you aren't you even you as the creator of a, of, a, of a resource are not possible of seeing all the awesome that's possible inside that resource it's only other people that can help you find the awesome yeah. that's why you have yeah. open apis open 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 APIs find the awesome <laughs> i like it uh i have a a new search engine wait a minute what who you know <laughs> do, do we need a new search Alta engine? vista this is yeah alta vista's back baby <laughs> No, this is kind of interesting. The guy who created uh, Twitter and Blogger before it, F. Williams, has a new company called Jelly, Ask Jelly, and it's kind of a search engine meets Quora, but by itself. I mean, you know, if you go to AskJelly.com, you can you can query uh, things and humans answer, right? Uh, which is and so you get kind of interesting things. But this is why I this is uh, this has been around for I don't know a few months, but the thing that really got me is the Ask Jelly Chrome. Uh, uh, extension because now when you do searches on Google, if there's a jelly answer, you'll get it. No, today is no man's sky day today, right? And um, everybody's all talking about it. So I was doing a search on no man's sky, praying, hoping there'd be a Mac version. No, there's not. Praying, hoping there'd be an Xbox version. No, there's not. It's not on any of the things I have. It's uh, the PlayStation 4 comes out today, and a few days later, uh, we'll see a PC version. But when I did the search, the Ask Jelly plugin added a little thing in the sidebar, uh, which was a jelly question comparing another game, which I'd never heard of, 
and uh, a response, which is really awesome. So Google's always done, you know, these sidebar knowledge graph things. But this is an additional element that is added via a Chrome extension. And turning it on is kind of cool. Every once in a while, you'll get some additional information to your search from a human being who's actually uh, got uh, an idea. It's, it's from askjelly.com, and it's in the uh, Chrome extensions library, and it's free. And it's kind of a nice thing to have uh, hanging around. I don't think I'm ever going to go to a separate site and ask a question, you know, or do a search of questions. But the fact that they pop up in my search results, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of another fabulous episode. I thank um, Andy Anako for talking me down from the ledge, <laughs> as always. Don't worry, there are other ledges. There are many. There's many a ledge. <laughs> Uh, if you go to the Chicago Sun-Times, you're sure to read his byline from time to time covering technology topics and his website, cwob.com. Follow him on Twitter, I-H-N-A-T-K-O. And uh, he's got a great Flickr feed of images. He's a great photographer. Uh, Instagram, too. Thank you, Andrew. Oh, and don't Chance. forget his many other podcasts, including Material, a podcast about Google, uh, which is on replay.fm, right? And on 5x5, five five, you're still doing Anako's Almanac? Uh, yep, although we have big, big news coming. Uh, uh, not the next show, but the show after that. Uh, so definitely tune in for that once. Go to 5x5 five five and look for the Ooh, Anako Almanac. Yeah, there's a tease. Big, big Was I being a tease? <laughs> well, why? Uh, also, Renee Ritchie from imore.com. It is the place to go to learn how to use your Mac better or Pokemon. Uh, it is, it's a great site with lots of great information. I'm more.com. And he has his own podcast, including the brand new one, Apple talk, uh, with, with serenity. Yes. Uh, serenity and Michael Gartenberg. We talked about the iPad story today. It should be out tomorrow. Excellent. Excellent stuff. Oh, you do two podcasts in one day. I'm your second, huh? <laughs> no, you're never the second Leo, <laughs> but man, you're the main event is yeah, that's the warm up podcast. We'll call it that. Thank you very much for joining us. We do Mac Break Weekly, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC, every Tuesday on the Twit Network. You can watch live at twit.tv slash live or in the alternate player at live.twit.tv. For people who have trouble with the first, there's always the second. And the chat room is always open 24-7 for you to chat in irc.twit.tv. And I want to really give a tip of the hat to the community moderators they're, they're self-nominated. They come out of the community, and they do a great job making that chat family-friendly and fun. Um, so tip your moderators and enjoy, <laughs> and enjoy the view. I don't think they even accept tips. I tried to pay them, and they said no. But they're just great. Uh, that's irc.twit.tv. Of course, you can also get the show on demand everywhere that you get podcasts, including our own website, twit.tv slash mbw. If you'd like to see the Brick House before it's whittled <laughs> away to nothing, hurry. Email tickets at twit.tv. We'll make sure you get in and uh, get a tour and get the show and get to see what's going on. And as I mentioned, it, on August 21st, a little less than two weeks from today, we will be moving. So if you have tickets to see a show after that, go to the East Side Studios. Moving on up to the East Side Studios. Uh, I would wear socks, though, because that stick -em looks looks pretty. Look at that. They're going to they're gonna finish that before we finish the show. That, you like that carpet? Looks good, huh? Nice yeah. charcoal. Yeah. Something neutral. Well, You're coming to Petaluma in two months. Like you can still stop by the brick house, but you'll be getting your nails done. <laughs> Actually, the, no, uh, it's a brewery. It's, there's oh, a okay. brewery coming in here. They're going to yeah. have giant vats of hops and malt. And so we'll up a different kind of party. It'll smell the same, though. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's the amazing thing. Thanks for joining us. Back to work. Break time. Sorry. Sorry.